We're going to start up in a couple of uh, minutes. I'm Ron Rothenberg, and uh, I'm going to take you through the first part of our hormone optimization module. Uh, while we're, people are still filing in, about how many of you is this, this is your first uh, seminar in this field? Say that's more than half, three quarters, amazing. So everyone, all of your speakers were in your position a few years ago. And because uh, we all, we're all coming from somewhere else in medicine. We all stumbled into this field because we wanted something better out of medicine, something better for our patients and for, for our own lives. I stumbled into the second a forum meeting, and I, now this was 18 years ago, amazingly. It was in a uh, Las Vegas uh, Alexis Park Hotel, a, a non-gambling hotel with a tent in the back. And the meeting was in a tent, but it was pouring rain, and it was, uh, rain was kind of getting in, there were kind of board bridges between one part uh, of the meeting and the next. So certainly this field has evolved tremendously in the past 19 years. And a lot of it has leaked out, merged with conventional medicine. And of course, that's a great thing, because we want these ideas that we say are, are evidence-based and are helpful to our patients. We want this to get out there, and the more of it merges with conventional medicine. So, so many of the things we're going to talk about now with hormones, with supplements, again, and it was an exotic statement that we made here 10 years ago, and now People are starting to say, oh yeah, we know that. So we're going to start our hormone module with this presentation that I call Hormone Myths Versus the Medical Evidence. And you know, one of the criticisms in this field is, oh gee, what, what, kind of, what kind of evidence do you have for all those statements that you make about hormones being safe and effective? And uh, we'll take a look at some of that. Also the idea of hormone myths it's really hard to disprove a myth because you can't refute the data that it was based on because that was never there. So how do you disprove a myth? You know, it's really, it's difficult. So what we'll do is go through different uh, patient uh, scenarios. And if you want to, you can interact and I'll, I'll present the patient. You can tell me what you do, kind of board style. Or if, if uh, no one's that interactive, I'll play, play both roles. And we'll switch from one kind of patient scenario to the, to the next. I guess let's, yeah, let's just get going. Okay, here's your first patient. Go to the doctor. He's a 60-year-old physician. Just had an acute MI. He's in failure. He's tachycardic. His heart rate's 120. Rest of the vitals are okay. Here's some lab. His TSH is 3.5. Free T4, that's in range, 1.3. Free T3. Gee, I wonder who even ordered that. When's the last time you've seen a free T3 in a hospital chart? Uh, it's low. His reverse T3, when's the last time you've seen that on a hospital chart? Or have you ever seen it on a hospital chart? Could be useful. It's high. So anyway, would you treat him with thyroid? He's got acute MI. He's in the, uh, he's in the CCU. Gee, his pulse is 120. Thyroid? Would that, wouldn't that kind of rev him up or give him atrial fib or do something bad? Well, again, hormone myths. Let's take a look. So the myth is that thyroid is dangerous for the cardiovascular system. And this myth comes about from, we all know the first thing you do in a workup for new onset atrial fib, and, you know, you get th thyroid evaluation, hopefully more than just a TSH. So of course there's such a thing as atrial fibrillation and such a thing as hyperthyroidism. But optimizing thyroid has tremendous cardiovascular benefits. We'll get into this in a little more detail tomorrow in the thyroid presentation. Lipids are better. Failure is better. It's positive inotropic agent for the heart and dilates the periphery with less systemic vascular resistance. And in the setting of an acute MI, prevents this maladaptive cardiac remodeling with fetal myosin, sometimes called the broken heart syndrome. And this leads to dyskinetic myocardium. It can normalize the QT interval, and that's a good thing. Shorter QT interval, less chance for malignant arrhythmias. Um, CRP improved. That's a good thing. We know CRP is a marker of inflammation, a risk factor for acute MI, but also bad stuff on its own. It's, a, it's, an, infl it's an inflammatory compound. Normalizes homocysteine, also an inflammatory compound. And arterial stiffness is improved and endothelial dysfunction is improved. So look at some of the stats on thyroid in the cardiovascular setting. A low T3 
Free, again, once you're getting lab, you might as well get the real hormone. 